are the best of the best. From all over the globe, they have come here to compete in the world's most prestigious water skiing event. It's all on the dampening layer, improved core technology, and comes with a PowerShell ready top. The good 9200. Water ski boots must perform two functions. They hold your foot to the ski and provide control. Plus, they release from your foot during a bad fall. Rubber boots do neither well. If you tighten them for control, they hurt and they don't come off. If you loosen them for comfort and safety, you lose power and control. The new good PowerShell system does both functions better. Good Ski Technologies, the leaders in composites, present the Good 9100 Carbon Composite Water Ski. The 9100 is constructed out of carbon fiber, which results in a ski that is lighter and stronger, providing better flex control and hydrodynamics than any other water ski on the market today. The advantages quickly become apparent in the performance of the ski. One out of every three skiers ski their personal best the first time on the ski. Hi, I'm Dave Good, founder of Good Ski Technologies, located in Waterford, Michigan. The skiers you just saw are skiing on the new 9100 Good Composite Water Ski. They're skiing their personal best due to new technology. We got our start in uh, business with snow ski poles. Back in the 1930s, ski poles were made of bamboo, basically a wood, uh, with leather baskets. This was the only materials that they had available at that time. In 1958, Ed Scott came out with the very first aluminum ski pole. It had obvious advantages over the wood pole. It was stronger, it was lighter, it could be graphic, made look better. Well, in 1991, my firm came out with a new carbon fiber ski pole. Again, we were stronger and lighter than aluminum. We were shock absorbent and aerodynamic. Performance increased through material sciences. Same thing has happened with water skis. This is a water ski, vintage 1950-1960. It is made of wood, weighs about 10 pounds. Did not perform as well as the later 1970s, early 1970s fiberglass skis came out. One very similar to this, weighed about eight pounds. The new Good 9100 ski weighs only 2.9 pounds, yet at less than half the weight, it has over twice the physical properties of fiberglass. It is those physical properties that allow you to ski your personal best. I'm Alan McWilliams. I'm a owner and promoter of Shortline Lake, world-class water ski site in Destin, Florida. I'm also a national competitor, and uh, I've skied on a Conley ski for the past 10 years, and was introduced to Dave Good last year, and uh, obtained a ski, and first time I put it in the water, I excelled my old performances by at least a half a pass, and I've now broken my personal goals and looking to set higher ones to uh, extend my skiing career. And it's all happened, in my opinion, because of the good ski.
One advantage that carbon fiber offers over fiberglass is its strength to weight ratio. Carbon fiber has a four times strength to weight advantage. Keep in mind, this ski weighs about 2.9 pounds compared to seven and a half to eight pounds for a traditional fiberglass ski. At less than half the weight, this ski has over twice the physical properties. You ski on the physical properties. We have some off access fibers in this ski that prevents the ski from twisting torsionally. Uh, that torsional stability gives the ski better hold and edge control behind the boat. Carbon fiber ski is much faster than traditional fiberglass skis. Carbon is a much higher reactive material than fiberglass. Um, as an example, you round the buoy on a fiberglass ski. Fiberglass elongates 7% before it stops and gives resistance. Come around the buoy on a fiberglass ski, the ski starts to load. Load, 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 and away we go. Carbon fiber only elongates a half a percent. Comes around the buoy, you load it, you get reaction out much quicker. The carbon fiber ski not only is faster from buoy to buoy, and of course, it's time and distance. The faster you can go behind the boat, the earlier you arrive at the next buoy. The ski is also much less fatiguing to ski. You've got about one half the fatigue level to, uh, to ski with this ski. You don't get as physically tired, you don't get torn up like you might on a fiberglass ski. There's less, less drag. The good ski is not a price point ski. To understand why, we've talked a little bit about the materials, $25 a pound versus $1 a pound for fiberglass. Let me tell you a little bit about the construction technology to help you better understand. The material comes to us in refrigerated trucks. We have to store it here at zero degrees Fahrenheit until we're ready to process it. Once we put the materials into the mold, we cook it for three hours under high temperatures and high pressures. A normal water ski is cold molded. It cycles in about 8 to 12 minutes. A water ski is made up of the word composite. You have fibers and you have epoxy resin that holds those fibers together. A fiberglass ski is built with basically a five minute epoxy. You can go to the hardware store, buy a five minute epoxy. You can also buy an hour cure epoxy. And if you were to make a small little a uh, piece of each, you could feel the difference of them. Five-minute epoxies have a small linear chain molecule. They have a tendency to break down, to change flex very quickly. They have a PSI tensile strength of about a thousand. The epoxies we use are a much higher molecular weight. We create an epoxy molecule that is longer and it's also three-dimensional. We have five times 5,000 PSI tensile strength at the resin level. Our ski will not break down, will not change flex over years of very hard use. If you've ever been skiing on cold water versus warm water, cold water seems to the ski riding higher in the water, going faster behind the boat, maybe than you're accustomed to in warm water. Uh, warm water, if you're in very hot water, you might actually find the ski sluggish and down. You always have thought that it is the water that is changing. Keep in mind, a fiberglass ski is very interesting. They are cold molded at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat distortion point for these skis is about 160. If you heat a fiberglass ski up to 160 degrees, it'll basically come apart by itself. And if it doesn't, you can just pull on it lightly and it will come apart. And in water conditions, we have a very accurate flex test machine here. If you flex test a fiberglass ski at 80 degrees versus 90 degrees, the ski will flex test 7% difference. Now, go to the library and take a look at the water density difference between 80 degrees and 90 degrees. 
you'll find that it is to the sixth decimal point, point zero 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 one difference. It is your ski that is changing, not the water. Carbon fiber ski, on the other hand, it's molded under high temperatures and high pressure. We have a heat distortion on this ski of over 300 degrees. The temperature difference between 80 and 90 is not significant. You will find the good ski much more consistent in a variety of water conditions and temperature ranges. Steve Cordina, trained right here at Trophy Lakes, Charleston, South Carolina. Been riding a goody ski for about seven months, and my skiing has improved about four to five buoys. I'm Roger Lyons. So the additional buoys, I would say this ski uh, gave me at least seven buoys on a much more consistent basis. My name is Jerry Sturman. I'm a surgeon in Raleigh, North Carolina. My uh, performances have uh, improved dramatically. I'm now running 32 off in record tournaments, which for me is a uh, quantum leap uh, in performance. I don't really care to go back to the old ski. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've got it in my car at the uh, Pro Tour stop here, and I'm going to unload that thing today. When you first get on the good 9100C, you'll find how easy it is to adjust to it. It's so easy that, in fact, one out of three skiers, the first time on the ski, set their personal best. When skiers do ski the personal best, I ask that they call in and allow me to enter their name into the personal best logbook. It can be either tournament or practice, and I can just read a few uh, names for you. Jack Middleton on August 29th, 34 mile an hour, got three buoys at 35 off. Here we are, John Rogers on July 1st, uh, skied two and a half buoys at 39 and a half, 34 miles an hour. Jeff Rogers on September 1st ran three buoys at 41 off. At that point, that was Jeff's personal best. That also tied the Open Men's National uh, record with Wade Cox. In the state tournament in the state of Michigan last year, the ski took first, second, third, fourth, fifth in the men's three division, first, second, third, fourth in men's four, first, second, men's five, first, men's six, first, women's four. In the Ohio State Championships, there's a gentleman by the name of Mike Meek from Meek Ski School in Albany, Ohio. Mike has won the state championships 26 years in a row. Um, I ship skis to two other gentlemen in Ohio. Um, Bob Archambeau and Ted McCauley. Our ski took first and second. Uh, Mike finished third. Our ski took first in the Minnesota State Championships men's three, first Minnesota State Championships men's two. Uh, I have a picture here from the regionals. Uh, the ski swept men's three division, first, second, and third place. Uh, this is an interesting story from a gentleman by the name of Kent Smith. Kent sent me this letter in December, um, and I'll read it to you briefly here. It says, last year when I broke my old favorite ski less than a month before the tournament, I figured I wouldn't even ski in the Western Regionals. Luckily, I called and took advantage of your $25 demo offer on a new ski. With only two weeks practice, I had already skied new personal bests and went to the Regionals with renewed confidence. To make a long story short, I not only skied my personal best, tournament or practice, but I won the men's four slalom event. I just want to take a moment to thank you for the finest ski on the market and for all your personal assistance getting the ski ready for me. Uh, Kent also sent me a picture of him skiing. Interesting thing is Kent was seated 14th in this tournament. In all respects, he should have finished 14th place. Uh, he beat names such as Mike Siderhound and Gordon Rathbun. 
uh, and he did it in, in a short time. We've talked about details of how skis are designed and how skis are constructed. But you can't appreciate how this ski is going to work for you until you've had an opportunity to try it. I put together a special demo offer. For $25, I will send a ski directly to you. Try it on your own lake at your own pace. If you like it, buy it. If not, send it back. It's that easy. Now that fiberglass skis are obsolete, why not make your rubber boots obsolete too? Introducing the new good PowerShell boots and interlock screwless binding system. The PowerShell features a hard shell boot that increases your edge control and power while providing more comfort than rubber boots. The patent pending interlock screwless binding system is releasable and provides for easy mounting and adjusting. The good power shell boots and the interlock binding system, the new standard for competitive water skiing.